Welcome to Financial Focus, brought to you by Gulf Coast Financial Services founder and CEO, John Kirkendall. John and his team of financial, legal, and tax professionals have been providing North Florida savers and investors sound, comprehensive financial guidance for over 30 years, helping you to achieve important life and planning goals. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and tune in for more Financial Focus by visiting gulfcoastfinancial.net. And welcome into the program. This is Financial Focus brought to you by the best of the best in financial services as named by the readers of the Lake City Reporter. Seven years and running the team from Gulf Coast Financial Services. Founder and CEO John Kirkendall here with us each and every week providing us information, guidance, education on what we need to be doing and paying attention to with our money and with the economy so that we can make better financial and investment decisions. Uh, John, according to some recent studies from Bloomberg, we need the education, especially the younger generation, it seems, does not feel as confident in their financial progress and planning. Yeah, Peter, you know, that's uh, surprising that uh, nearly half of the millennials say they're living on paycheck to paycheck. Um, And, you know, I understand that things have a higher cost, but we also have higher wages. But, you know, I'm, I'm, when I saw that, I got to thinking, is it because a, a different generation or is it because this com- millennials now have more than I had when I was their age? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it's a lot more things to take our money now. And I think we have to be budget minded um, and resourceful in how we use our money. Yeah, absolutely. And so, I've, I've, I've thought. Many times, John, about, okay, we're dealing with inflation and we're hearing a lot about inflation right now, but it's not just the price of the things that we own that goes up. It is the fact that we add new line items to the budget over time. 15 years ago, we 20 years ago, maybe we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have cell phone protection insurance. We didn't have identity theft protection insurance. We didn't have Netflix and Hulu and all of the subscriptions. There are a lot of additional expenses that are being added into what is sort of deemed to be the, the regular living expenses these days. Yeah. And I think the other thing too, Peter, is because of the internet and because of all the things it's brought to us, it's so much easier to shop now than it ever was. I mean, you know, Amazon has got to be the, the, you know, the best friend to a lot of people out there. Uh, and trouble to the budget. <laughs> yeah, trouble to, because it's so easy to look at that. And, you know, they'll even send you a link and say, hey, we thought you might like this. And so, you know, you look at it and you think, well, gee, I need that. And so you press send. And before you know it, it comes in. But then you got to pay for it. So I think that's a lot of the reasons that millennials, but also seniors, yeah. it's a, a heck of a problem for people at home who are at home a lot. Um, just so easy to order all this stuff. Well, they, they have this, this study from Bloomberg focused specifically on millennials, but I have also seen other studies that show that seniors are actually the portion of the population demographically with the highest um, new poverty cases. They are moving into poverty higher than any other demographic group. And, you know, there are a number of reasons for that, John, but Mm -hmm. I think that another article that we're going to look at today about the six myths of retirement probably will shed a lot of light on that side of the spectrum. Well, I think you're right, Peter, but I think also, you know, for, for seniors, um, there's a lot more there to take their money now. Inflation, all the things that we talk about. But then, as you said, there are more things that get our budget. And if we're not careful, before long, we've got, you know, four or five subscriptions for Hulu, Netflix, uh, you know, all this stuff. And then we're paying two or $300 a month for cable and a couple hundred dollars a month for our cell phones. And those things go up and we don't really realize it. I know that Netflix just had an increase. Well, how many people cancel their subscription because it went up a couple of bucks? Hey, it's only a a couple (laughs) bucks a month, $24 a year. I can live with that. 
I, I wonder if anybody has ever done a study of the new line items in the budget today versus maybe 20 years ago. I would be interested in that. I hear a lot of discussion of, oh, well, a gallon of milk costs 79 cents back at so-and-so date. And today it costs $2.79, a loaf of bread, a set of tires, a new house, a new car. But those are kind of existing things that have been time tested. I would be interested to see of how many new things have actually now been included and incorporated into the average American's budget. Because I bet that that number would be shocking as well. Well, it would be because, you know, when I was growing up and, and I'm dating myself now, we didn't have cable. So we just had free TV. We had three channels. We watched those three channels. Didn't know any better. We didn't have internet. We didn't have all the subscription services. Didn't have Amazon, so we had to go to the we had to go to the store to buy whatever we had. And if we didn't have the money, we didn't couldn't buy it. And I could go to the corner uh, Minute Mart and get a half a gallon of milk and a loaf of bread. And Mama wanted to know where the change was from the dollar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you know, things have changed. And I think what you look at, if you look at what we've added to the budgets that are now considered necessities that really are wants. We've increased our budget three times from what it should have been or what we could live with if we had to, but nobody wants to go back, you know? Well, it's, it's striking with this Bloomberg study of millennials because just a couple years ago, as COVID recovery was beginning and as the government was beginning to hand out stimulus checks, and then I saw subsequent reports for about the next year that Americans were actually uh, increasing their savings rate and by and large in about the best financial shape they had been. But I think maybe specifically with millennials, it's also a factor of during that time, a lot of them came back home to live with parents and now are reestablishing kind of their own own budget and their own adult lives and and back out into uh, their growth and progress. And, and now once again, sort of feeling the pressures of that and feeling underprepared. So let's get them more prepared, John. Let's get them as prepared as early as possible. Let's talk uh, now, not just about millennials, but about retirement and some of the understandings that we think we have of retirement, but that could possibly need to be re-examined, could possibly be myths of retirement. And we've got a a list of six myths of retirement. Um, Number one is that retirement will be taken care of by social security alone. Uh, I think that in in our conversation thus far, we can pretty much determine (laughs) that's probably not going to be the case. Well, it's not going to be, Peter, since the average check um, is $1,657 from Social Security. Uh, that's about $19,900 a year. I don't know of anybody that wants to live at that level. And so if you're relying on Social Security alone, um, then that's a substantial, a substantial drop. I mean, it's I, I don't know what the poverty line is now, but that's pretty close to it. Well, I believe that Social Security is actually intended to keep us right there hovering just above the poverty line, right? Right. It's I mean, it's not supposed to be it's not supposed to be a retirement account. Let's say that. Yeah. But also, we know for a fact that we're getting close to the point where we're going to run out of a hundred cents on every dollar being able to give it out. And we're looking at taking a 20, 25 percent haircut over what we're getting now. And so, you know, there's. Um, there's no way that Social Security is going to be the retirement fund for everybody in the United States. Uh, You know, with a socialistic country like Sweden, you can get away with having a socialized retirement and everybody having a retirement. But with a country as large as the United States and with the population we have, there's no way that we can fund with our taxes everybody's retirement. So we have to be responsible for our own retirement. It's a great way to supplement our retirement and to give us some extra money, but it's not meant to be your retirement account. Now, off menu of your list here, but 
to the point is that, John, just because Social Security doesn't cover everything doesn't mean that we want to leave any dollars on the table. We really need to make an optimal mm -hmm. decision with Social Security. That is a service that you and your team there at Gulf Coast Financial Services do assist with, the Social Security report and mm -hmm. optimization. Yeah, it's we we have a we have what we call social security maximization. So we can tell you when well, you come in and tell us, you know, give us your social security report. We can tell you when's the best time to retire. We can tell you how much it's going to cost you to to take it early and how much you're going to get when it's late. And we can come out with a with a crossover as to when the optimum time is. Now it would be best if everybody could wait till age seventy and pick take it, but a lot of people can't. And so this report will show you the dollars you're leaving on the table and when's the best time to, for you to take it. Also, you know, as we reach full retirement age, there may be some tricks in this thing or some caveats we can use so that we can get some free money while our Social Security is still growing, especially if we're a married couple. So we like to look at that report and work with everybody on that software is fantastic. Something we didn't have three or four years ago, but now it's ready, readily available. And something that you can take advantage of there at Gulf Coast Financial Services. If you would like to crunch the numbers, run the scenarios and maximize that social security, pick up the phone, give them a call 386-755-9018. That's 386-755-9018. 386-755-9018. John, I think you downplayed it just a little bit when you said a few dollars. The difference can be substantial. I mean, you're talking oh. a difference of, in some cases, several hundreds of thousands of dollars in just the difference in decision that we make with Social Security alone if, if we just placed that piece of retirement in a vacuum. Oh, yeah. I've seen in some cases where it's three, four hundred thousand dollars difference between trying to maximize it and trying to take it early. Sure. Well, let's let's make sure that we make the best decision with that then, because that's money that we either get or don't get. If we don't get it, it's got to come from our personal assets or we just don't have it. Now, when it comes to our personal assets, we need to do a better job there as well. Myth number two is that if I participate in my 401k and contribute up to whatever match is available, that that will be enough for retirement. Well, you know, certainly we should we should contribute up to the match. In our company 401k, we want to make sure that we get we don't leave any money on the table there either and that we contribute up to the match. Now, I think Dave says we need to invest 15% of our earnings into savings in order to make sure that we have the retirement account that we need to have. And so we should maximize our, our 401k and then we should look at so, so doing something with a Roth, if we've got a Roth 401k option, we want to take advantage of that. Or we may want to just actually contribute separately to a, for, uh, to a Roth IRA. Uh, that is baby step four, 15% toward those retirement <laughs> accounts. If we are following Dave Ramsey's baby steps there, that is a big one. That is a benchmark. That's where Dave says you're turning the tide from intensity to intentionality, and you're beginning to build wealth and achieve truly long-term financial goals. That's the benchmark that uh, he would suggest. You know, I did the math one time early on and I said, well, what if we just did 10%? And then I thought to myself, well, over a 30 year career, if we saved 10% and we made the, the same amount of money over that the entire 30 year career, by the end of that career, we would have only saved three years worth of what we were accustomed to making. So, you know, maybe that pushing toward 15% is a good idea. And uh, at, at the very least, as you said, uh, capturing whatever match is available is, is really absolutely essential. Uh, number three, this one struck me as, as kind of ironic as well. I'll work through retirement. Maybe that's a, a mindset that a lot of people have. I, I have heard of more and more people, John, saying, I don't want to retire. I just want to rewire. Uh, is, is that what this myth alludes to? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, th I don't think so, Peter. I think what people have in the United States is, especially is this Superman complex that I'm never going to get sick. I'm never going to have an injury and that I'm going to be able to work uh, and do the job that I'm doing right now forever. And, you know, in a lot of cases, 
uh, especially with manual labor where you're lifting and you're, you're doing things that exert energy and, and muscles. As we get older, our muscles aren't as strong as they used to be. And we're not able to continue at the pace we did. I think that is something that Americans don't really understand. The other thing, too, is, is that as we get past 65, there's more and more chance that we're going to get ill. We're going to have to have a hip replacement, a knee replacement, back surgery. I mean, all those things come into play. And people are not, you know, they're not indestructible. So we need to not, you know, it's kind of like while I'm working, there's nothing that says I'm going to be able to support my family forever. I need to have insurance, disability insurance, life insurance to cover me what, during those times. We need to have that retirement account insurance for when I get old because I can't work. And the thing that we've learned and we talked about it on the last show is I'm going to need as much money in retirement as I needed yesterday when I was working. There's no way I'm, I'm going to need less. Because things cost more. You know, you, you look at gasoline, you look at all the stuff that we have to have, and it all costs more. Cars, everything costs more. Yeah. So, and it's going to cost even more because if we continue to raise the minimum wage, we're going to continue to fund uh, higher prices and higher cost of goods. There's no way that we can pay somebody $15 an hour and not pass it on. So I don't know where people think that, you know, the profit's going to come from, but there's no way this myth's going to work. Myth number three, I think, is a figment of imagination for Americans that they're just going to live forever. I can tell you this, at my age, I'm not where I was 10 years ago. Physically, mentally, I'm okay, but physically, I just can't do it anymore. You know, I, I often wondered why older retirees said that, that they don't have any time. Well, the reason is it takes us twice as long to do something as everybody else, because we have to rest. We think about it. You know, we meditate on it and then we go do it. And so um, this one certainly ain't going to work. I can tell you. Well, luckily for you, you're not Fred Flintstone busting rocks and sliding <laughs> down a dinosaur's no. back. Yeah, yeah. No. Uh, however, I, th I think to your point, absolutely. And you're doing a great job of moving through these myths and segueing. Myth number four, Medicare will cover my medical expenses. Um, the medical expenses are going to be there. To, to your point, though, previously about uh, needing to replace the working career income. Let's say even if, even if uh, there was a substantial difference and, and we started day one of retirement only needing 70% of our income. Last year's inflation was seven and a half percent. So we're already back up. And then regular inflation of 3% would double our need for income, double our expenses in about 24 years. So now we're all the way back up to 140% of our working right. career income. Oh, and by the way, those medical expenses are one of the largest components of mm -hmm. additional expenses that we add into the budget into retirement. And also segue with what you just said, Social Security gave us, uh, what was it? A, was it a 5.9, 5, 5 5 almost six, but then, yeah. and then, then, the, it then up. my Medicare went up 12%. So I really didn't gain anything uh, overall. It actually cost me money. So I'm not going to be able to do that. M Medicare is not free. I, I realized that when I got on Medicare, that it cost me just as much for my Medicare premiums, my Part B, my supplement, and my drug card as it did if I had when I had regular insurance. So while everybody thinks that when I get 65, I'm going to be able to go on Medicare and I'm not going to have any cost, that's not true. Married couple, almost $400,000 over their lifetime at age 65 on expenditures. The other thing, which is a big one, is, is that Medicare – will not pay for long-term care. It only covers for one year in a rehab facility. It will not cover long-term care. And, you know, that cost is going to get astronomically large before we know it. And there's nothing we can do about it. And there's no really way that we can protect it unless we start now and do some hybrid um, investing to give us some protection for long-term care. But as the insurance companies have determined, we cannot actuarially predict long-term care cost. 
So nobody offers it anymore. Yeah. And even the insurance industry behind the scenes had problems projecting the costs of long-term care, yeah. the, the rise in costs, the number of people who would need it, how long they would need it for. So John, that's why you often talk about these linked benefits or hybrid solutions or other ways to address this issue, but not one that we should ignore, uh, certainly not for our financial well-being and also our emotional and, 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 and mental well-being, uh, knowing that we have that covered will, will serve us well and benefit us into and throughout retirement, knowing that we've at least discussed <laughs> how we will address that. John, talking about all of these serious topics, myth number five, it's, it's simply too late for me to plan for retirement, uh, too late for me to save or do anything about these, these things. That's a complete myth. Never too late, right? No, it's never too late to start. I mean, what you need to do is get with a financial professional, work out a budget, figure out how you can save money and then start saving um, so that, you know, if you're 40 and you retire, you know, you contribute 25% of your income towards retirement until you're 67, you'll have $592,000. Um, and that's better than nothing, Peter. I mean, it's better to have that as a reserve fund and be able to pull out of that during retirement than it is not to have anything. We have to start somewhere. And if you haven't started, now's the ideal time. If you're young, now's the ideal time. And even after you uh, retire, if you're working part-time or if you have extra money, it's great to stay on that budget and make sure that you're spending the money for what we talked about. And that's the reason we work up that income plan here is so that we take all of your expenses, your budget, and we project that out. And then we look at it every year. And if you've gone off, if you took a trip this year that you weren't expecting, then we won't take one next year. If you're willing to do that, we can work out that income plan for you and give you the kind of retirement you want. But a lot goes into it. And we don't know what we don't know. Myth number six, I can handle this. I can do it on my own, John. Well, Peter, I got to tell you, I, I, I've been doing this a long time now. I've been, I've been working 50 years in this industry, 20 in banking, 30 here. And I've made some mistakes in my own retirement along the way. Took Social Security when I didn't need to. I wasn't penalized, but I thought, well, I might as well go ahead and get it. Had I waited until 70, it would have actually given me another $200,000 over my lifetime, which I really could use be nice to have that. You know what I mean? To buy another old truck or something. And um, there are things that I've done because I thought, you know, I was doing the right thing. I have learned and we're learning every day in this industry, different techniques, computers are tra trained, helping us, software is improving. There's no way that an individual can learn what you and I've learned uh, in, in the time that we've had. It's just too complicated. We're going to make mistakes. As, as a famous uh, North Carolina quarterback said, hindsight is 50-50. Um, but <laughs> but, yeah. but as, as has also been said, smart people learn from their own mistakes. Geniuses yeah. learn from the mistakes of others. I just, John, don't feel as though we've got the time or luxury to be learning from our own mistakes and achieving that ideal retirement. Well, you know, if, if, if everything was easy, the University of Florida football team wouldn't have a head coach. Everybody just get out there and run around. Somebody needs to coach those people and keep them in direction, give them some discipline, help them become the best football players they can become. And that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to help everybody become the best retirees, the best savers that they can be. The better job we do now, the better it'll be later in life. And so that's really our mission. That's what we try to do. Well, that is something that they do help clients achieve each and every day. They're at Gulf Coast Financial Services. And if you would like to make those important steps in your financial progress into your future to make sure that you have a handle on your money, on your finance, on your investment, and how to bring it all together in a plan and address some of the myths of retirement and of money, pick up the phone, give them a call, have a sit down, have a conversation, start with just a phone call with Gulf Coast Financial Services, uh, founder and CEO, John Kirkendall, and the rest of the team there at Gulf Coast. You will uh, find that they are uh, experienced, 
qualified professionals that can help you look at your situation in many different lights, different aspects. Of course, sister company, Gulf Coast Tax Advantage right there under <laughs> the same roof as well, looking at things from a financial and a tax planning standpoint and point of view. Pick up the phone, give them a call, 386 755 9018, 386 755 9018, 386 755 9018. You can also visit online, Gulf Coast Financial. Dot net golf coast financial dot net lots of fantastic resources available for you there and we will link to the article that we have been discussing articles on today's program in the description of the podcast you can find that on the home page on the blog page and you can also find the videos out on youtube or wherever you uh, choose to surf so social media uh john you're everywhere at golf coast financial <laughs> uh at golf coast financial is, is usually where people can find you right that's right, Peter. We're always here. We're always waiting. Well, give them a call, ladies and gentlemen, if you need help, assistance, direction, answers to any questions about your money that have been on your mind. 386-755-9018. John, appreciate the time. Great show today. Thank you, Peter. It was great to be here. This really was a good show. Thank you. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and tune in for more financial focus by visiting GolfCoastFinancial.net. The information presented on this program is provided for informational purposes only, without warranty of accuracy, completeness, or suitability for a particular purpose. This program is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, legal, or tax advice. This information is general in nature and not specific enough to be construed as advice. You should not make any decision based on the information presented on this program without independent consultation with an appropriately licensed professional or competent advisor. Investment in securities or the market involves a potential risk for loss of principal. Trading, therefore, may not be suitable for all listeners. Annuity guarantees are based only on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing company. Withdrawals of growth from annuities may be taxable as ordinary income in the year it is taken. Individuals should review contracts for specific details of the product's features and costs. Early withdrawals may subject the owner to penalties, fees, or taxes. John Kirkendall is registered with and securities are offered through Kovac Securities, Inc., member FINRA SIPC, found online at www.kovacsecurities.com. Advisory services are offered through Gulf Coast Financial Services, Inc., a registered investment advisor in Florida. Gulf Coast Financial Services, Inc. is not affiliated with with Kovac Securities, Inc. or Kovac Advisors, Inc. Past performance is not indicative of future results. All investing involves risk. Investment decisions should be based on your own goals, time horizon, and tolerance for risk. Due to various factors, including changing market conditions and or applicable laws, the content may no longer be reflective of current opinions or positions.